told your sister you were about to cut your ankle bracelet off. Because I was taken off, like, I can't leave the house. I was, like, getting fed up, so I cut it off and told them I was going to leave. I gave her another $20 that day, and then I gave her the antiques because she was worried that she wasn't going to get paid, you know what I mean? Because I was obviously going to get locked up and I wouldn't be back home for a while, so. Ms. Gaffney, is that true? Did you know that your brother was about to take off? All of that is a lie. He had taken off while he was supposed to be at our mom's. The cops came over looking for him, and that was the first that I heard that he had cut off his ankle monitor. Mr. Nelson, how long had you been on parole? About five months. And what came of this parole violation? I had to go and finish up my time. So you're not on parole anymore? No. Where's this phone? I thought it was in my backpack, but I guess when I got out, there was no phone in my backpack. Everything else was in there, like my iPad and stuff like that, but not the phone. I must have got drunk and lost it or something. I'm not sure. Ms. Gafke, is this the worst thing your brother's ever done to you and your mother? I believe so because of the emotional toll that it's taken on not just me, but also my mom. Mr. Nelson, this isn't the first time you've ever had issues with the law. Have you been in and out of jail? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Gafke, wouldn't you say that that would add more stress than the loss of a phone? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. But you still consider this the worst thing he's done? Yes, because I feel completely disrespected by him. The fact that we had a signed agreement, I thought that that was covering my bases enough to let him know how serious I was about him being responsible and making payments. And even that wasn't enough to have him stand up and be responsible. And so I just feel like it was just a joke to him. I, I feel like he knew what he was going to do with the phone, and it was just his way of scamming me out of a phone. So he disrespected me, used me, and just had no regard for my feelings about the situation, how it affects my view on even other people in the world now, because the trust issue that I have now is just exemplified after everything that is, has happened with him. Judge Juarez. I've been listening to everything that's been said. I've been hearing a lot of talk about this agreement and this provision that you wouldn't leave the house with it. Can you show me where in the purchase agreement it says that Mr. Nelson is not permitted to leave your mother's house with the phone? Under five, delivery buyer will be entitled to take possession of the property on full payment. Full payment. That was what I had put in there as far as him being able to take the phone out of our mom's Right, apartment. but that's different than what you're saying, right? Because you did give him the phone. Yes, I wanted to be able to help him. So he took possession of the phone. So this wasn't really a take possession on full payment. It was, you're going to take possession on initial payment, but I'm going to impose restrictions on what you can do with it, right? right. And, and there's nothing in here about leaving the mother's house, anything like that, right? Right. It was more of a verbal agreement between the two of us. The sort of problem with that, and this is where, you know, everybody should be doing written agreements. They're great. But when you say, like, this was a separate verbal agreement, you know, in your written agreement, in paragraph 9, it says this agreement, the written portion, constitutes the entire agreement between the parties and supersedes any and all prior oral or written agreements or understandings. And this is sort of a common phrase in a contract. We're just going by this contract. So it's really important to read really carefully what's being agreed upon. Ms. Gafke, if you and your brother hadn't had this agreement about the phone prior to him leaving, cutting off his ankle monitor, do you think your relationship would still be suffering because of what happened or you think this is really about this the phone? It's more than about the phone. It's not about... about the deal. Yeah, it's right. not even about that. It's the fact that he just did whatever he wanted, regardless of the consequences to me, how that would affect me, how it would affect our relationship, and not being held accountable or being responsible. I, I just feel like he, he needs to do that, to be accountable for his actions, instead of just, you know, getting away with everything and continuing to make the same choices. Mr. Nelson, do you hear kind of how this impacted your sister? Yeah, I hear how it impacted her and everything. Um, but I didn't get away with anything. I went to prison. I did my time. And I've been suffering myself. I wasn't even there for any of my kids' birthdays or Christmases for like the last four years. So right, for her she's... to say that, that I'm just getting away with everything, I'm not getting away with anything. 